ABC. Michi Bradley. Hi, it's Michi, and greetings from Riverton, Maryland, here in the wonderful Salisbury Ocean City Media Market, the most boring media market in America. And you know, some of you have asked, does Riverton actually have a river? Well, look over yonder. There's a river. That is the Nanticoke River. And that is the river that um, comes through here. This is the dividing point between Wicomico County, which is on our side and in the market, and Dorchester County, which is on the other side and outside of the market. So that kind of gives you an, an idea of where we are. Okay, I just wanted to uh, jump in here and talk a little bit about um, something that REC did um, on uh, Friday and just in time for the Memorial Day holiday just a little backstory um, I am a dual citizen I do carry an, um, a passport for the United States and I carry one for Ireland and you know you never know someday when the money looks good maybe uh, even I will move there but um, I do keep in touch with um, affairs that go on in that area from a regulatory standpoint um, not as much as I do here with the FCC but still I mean but then again there's not a lot that goes on there versus here and um, one of the things that Ireland just recently did they declared VHF low spectrum and that's we're talking 30 to 50 megahertz here they declared it DED dead and so what did they do? They took 30 to 49 megahertz. They also took 54 to 69 megahertz. They gave it to the hams. The amateur service has a, a huge VHF low band allocation now in Ireland. Last year, I did have the opportunity to uh, work um, with the IRTS, which is the Irish Radio Transmitters Society which is uh, their IARU uh, member organization, basically their ARRL. And they were working on um, the band plan for all this new spectrum. And they were working specifically on a couple sections. First of all, let's talk uh, real quickly about what they want to do above 54. Now, there is some stuff that was documented. Some of my contributions included um, the fact that the section, uh, the spectrum from 54 to 60 is TV channel 2 here in the U.S., 60 to 66 is channel 3. And that channel 2 spectrum, if the sunspot cycle is right, could open up some very interesting ability for uh, television DX, at least one-way television DX, um, in, in that spectrum towards the United States and Canada. You know, imagine turning on your TV on channel two, pointing your antenna out towards the Atlantic and uh, seeing, uh, seeing a very snowy uh, EI call sign coming through on channel two. I mean, that's kind of what I envision there. Now, one of the other things that the, um, that the IRTS is doing right now, um, along with the International Amateur Radio Union, the IARU region one, folks is is that they are looking at the development of the spectrum around 40 megahertz the possibility of really trying to get at least a region one wide 40 megahertz or um, eight meter amateur radio band so they, they are looking at spectrum right now um, south africa has a um, allocation there slovenia has one and a couple other countries including the uk have allowed uh, beacon operations to take place in the eight meter band. I, I looked at the spectrum on the federal side of the house here with the NTIA. Based on the information that's unclassified, uh, which includes the NTIA Red Book and a couple other NTIA publications that are general public and unclassified, and um, came to the conclusion that really um, we could probably look at spectrum in this country. If we were to have a uh, an eight meter uh, amateur radio band here in the United States, we'd be looking in this, be looking at in, in the higher part of the 40, which would be um, above 40.5. And based on that, I filed a petition for rulemaking with the FCC to open up a notice of inquiry. And in this notice of inquiry and eventual uh, proposed rulemaking, what I want to do 
is I want to look at an amateur radio allocation on a secondary basis from 40.55 to 40.7. Now within that allocation is the ISM spectrum as well as a little bit of extra spectrum there from 40.55 um, upward. You know, I think it would be a great opportunity especially as we get ready for the next sunspot cycle peak which you know I, I recognize is going to be very so-so compared to previous sunspot cycles but still there's still opportunity there this is spectrum that from from a federal government perspective it looks like they only use this out west um, mostly because it's used for um, wildlife uh, tracking uh, meteor burst communications and um, uh, you know tracking and weather telemetry and stuff like that from what I could see in their usage it is mainly a, a west coast spectrum and it's also occasionally used by the military um, when appropriate I don't see this as as a bad thing and you know unlike the um, unlike the ARRL proposal this actually uh, promotes uh, STEM subjects, promotes people to build their own equipment, promotes the digital modes, and promotes uh, the study of radio propagation on more bands. And I, I think it's a win-win. I, I really do. It's just getting the NTIA, the federal government, to release um, this spectrum, or not necessarily release it, but tolerate the fact that there might be some hams on the East Coast that may occasionally use this spectrum for propagation testing and for FT8 and various modes. You know, the, the digital modes, you know, are the future of the, of the hobby. And, um, you know, FT8 and eventually FT4 are going to be the, the future of this hobby. So why don't we promote it in many ways that we can? And I think one way we can do this is to uh, promote additional propagation uh, study. Um, in a band that is between 10 and 6 meters. Why not? 8 meters. Sounds like a winner to me. Anyway, good day from Riverton. R -E -C. R -E -C.